to another episode of In the Studio. The program is brought to you by Davis Media Access and broadcasts on Davis Community Television. It's uh, that is Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Uverse Menu 99. We're also online at dctv.davismedia.org and we podcast all of our show. Uh, tonight we're going to uh, talk about uh, yet another initiative coming out of the Yolo County District Attorney Office and that is the Multicultural Community Council. And uh, to joining me here tonight to uh, talk about this are three distinguished guests and I will start with Jeff Reisey. He is the Yolo County District Attorney, and he is the, uh, the one who started uh, this uh, initiative together with your team, I'm sure. Yes. And then we have Carlos Matos. Uh, he is the co-chair of the council, and he is a retired uh, Yolo County employee, and uh, he's also a resident of Davis. Yes. And we have Jesse Ortiz, uh, he's uh, also the other co-chair of the uh, Multicultural Community Council. He is a professor at the Woodland Community College and uh, he is on the board of the Yolo County uh, Education. Mm -hmm. And uh, welcome gentlemen for Thank being you. here with, with me to, today. The office of the Yolo County District Attorney is uh, by no means new to these initiatives that are meant to bring together the community and uh, the, um, the law uh, and uh, in, 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 in a sense the, uh, a provide uh, communication and understanding and uh, deliver uh, the uh, justice for everyone. Now, in previous episodes of In the Studios, we have uh, uh, hosted uh, two other initiatives, very important initiatives. One is the Neighborhood Court, and the other one is the uh, Citizens Academy. So if uh, the viewers would like to go and uh, uh, log on to vctv.davismedia.org and see some of these other, view these other programs, that would be very nice. Um, so what is, I'm asking myself, what is multiculturalism? Uh, what do we need, mean by this? It's one of those catchy phrases that uh, over the, the, the months and the years have lost some of its context. So um, in order to perhaps introduce the topic in a humorous sort of way, uh, I, have, I would like to show uh, two cartoons that uh, somehow uh, demonstrate what uh, uh, one way of seeing multicultural uh, multiculturalism and this is uh, for example it's a Louis your parents are not are coming from Venice not Venus and you see Louis dressed up as a uh, Venus inhabitant so that's one uh, the next one is uh, also very interesting. It says, if I can read correctly, I'm made of body parts of 20 different men and women of various races and ethnicity. ethnicity. And uh, um, so if you want uh, someone who is a multicultural, multifaceted person, I'm your guy. So this is, um, again, a humorous way. Now I'm going to start with some of the questions that I have for you, and I'll start with Jeff because he's sitting next to me. Um, why did you start this Multicultural Community uh, Council? Was there a need for it? Yes, uh, we'll start with just the, the observation, the facts that Yolo County is very diverse. And that's a good thing. Uh, we have both diverse uh, cities between Davis and West Sacramento and Woodland and Winters and Esparto and Clarksburg, but our population is very diverse. And as the district attorney's office, we serve everybody. 
what we believed we could do better was communicate with that diverse population about what's going on in the criminal justice system and also to listen to concerns that were coming out of those different segments of Yolo County that we don't hear from a lot uh, because there are a lot of diverse cultures uh, in this county and, and frankly some don't have as much comfort dealing with law enforcement and dealing with the DA as others do. And so uh, this forum was, this, this multicultural community council was really born from the idea that we could do a better job in communicating and listening with a diverse group of people in Yolo County. Well, it sounds like a, a very good initiative, as I said. Um, how long has it been in force? So, about uh, four years, three no, years? No, Dr. Ortiz is going to have to help me out here. About a year and a half. A year and a half, so it's very new. Right. Did you have a template for this? Are other counties doing this too? We did look at other counties, and yes. Sacramento County has a program that's similar. Mm -hmm. um, ours is, is a little different. Mm -hmm. But it started actually with conversations inside the DA's office, and then I approached Dr. Ortiz about the idea of helping us to start this this organization and I think he can tell you about his perspective on the need and, and how we uh, that conversation grew into this. So Jesse what are your thoughts on this uh, why did we did we start it and did you start it rather and uh, um, is there a need? Well uh, first of all I, I didn't start it it came from the district attorney's office uh, Jeff Rising yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. And, and I, I want to give credit where credit's due that you know, Jeff being uh, the district attorney, it's very rare that you see uh, county elected officials taking such a bold move to, to talk about inclusionary practices and, and understanding and acceptance, so I really give him credit for that. Um, we went out and solicited and somewhat had picked about 10 to 12 individuals countywide who were very active in their community, uh, African American, Asians, um, Latinos, and uh, one of the things that when bringing people together that are to have diverse views and opinions, they tend to be very strong opinions. And, and so that was a, a challenge in itself in terms, but it, it's good. It's good. Of course, And I, yes. that's what the, uh, Jeff Reisig wanted, uh, people that were strong, uh, that would advocate and speak up. Uh, so that's how kind of we got started. And uh, from there, it's, it's taken its own course. Uh, I think there's, and I know the, the committee uh, the 12 of us would agree there's still room for improvement and we're growing as we go. Of course, yeah. and of course you uh, you um, you grow as the community sure. grows and as you learn from the community, I suppose. Carlos, uh, what, what do you do as a co-chair? Co co well, well. <laughs> I mean, how, uh, how does, does it, this council manifest itself? In other words, do you have well. events or...? Yes, we do. We do have events. We have had uh, events uh, for all the different cultures. Uh, we had Native American. We had African American. We had a, a Muslim uh, uh, event where you know the the community comes together to to hear uh, the perspective from those communities. Also, we we have the of course the Latinos. Uh, we had a, a, an event on that too. So we try to cover all the different uh, cultures in in the county. Uh, I came about this because uh, I worked uh, for the county as a mental health clinician for oh, 33 years. And yes. I started the, the counseling program at the jail and juvenile hall. So I became very aware of individuals that were involved you know, with Jeff and his office yes. and uh, the problems that uh, they, they experience and uh, that disparity. Um, you know, you go to the county jail and it looks like East L.A. Uh, and some areas it looks like, like Watts. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot disproportionate amount of Latinos and, and African Americans that get arrested and, and, and prosecuted through through the county. So I, I've had problems uh, uh, through because of my work uh, dealing with individuals that would get arrested for the first time uh, with small amounts of, of drugs and then they would end up in prison for two or three years and uh, as a result basically ruin their lives. So I was very critical of, of that uh, that process and uh, Jesse uh, asked me to be involved because of my strong opinions and I have to say that uh, before I, I left the county, uh, uh, my position at the county, I, I talked to Jeff about my concerns and you know I found him to be extremely open which was surprising yes. because uh, of, of his position of having to enforce the law 
And uh, since then, the legislature has changed. Now they no longer use the transportation, any small usable amount. Now it's in larger amounts. And uh, so now first-time offenders don't end up in prison like they were before. Yes, well, of course, it's uh, it's been a national trend, uh, and uh, to to have uh, first offenders uh, being locked up, and then it's very difficult for them to come out and uh, cope with their environment as they come out of prison. So, uh, so you're you're eminently qualified to, to be on uh, on the council. And uh, it, it, it's wonderful because you, you've been with them, so that's great. Um, I, 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 was, um, um, I, I was thinking, um, what is the demographics in Yolo County? And I'll ask Jeff, uh, Jesse, uh, perhaps, uh, is it really as diversified as Jess, uh, Jeff has said? or? Um, I would say so. Yolo County somewhat mirrors California, but only to in a slower pattern. Um, we're about 52% people of color, or 52% yeah. non-white, yeah. uh, with about 34% of that 52% being Latino. Um, it's a growing population. Um, when you look at a K-12 system in Yolo County, about 29,000 students, 65, 55% of those students also are are uh, people of color, mm -hmm. and uh, so it, it's going to continue to grow here here in uh, Yolo County. I, I was looking at some data just the other day that indicated that by the year 2040, 42 or so, the largest ethnic group in Yolo County would be Latino, which is no surprise because again yeah. we're mirroring California. Yes. So yes. Uh, so so it's it's. It's pretty close to California. So there sense. is definitely a need oh, uh, because yes. uh, uh, what should perhaps be said, isn't it true that some of these uh, ethnic minorities, majorities, whatever, uh, are recent immigrants or at least they haven't integrated in terms of the language and uh, the, the customs of, of, of the United States. Isn't that true perhaps? Or maybe well, not? Well, uh, recent immigrants, I guess that would have to be defined if you look at the Mexican or Latino population, to some degree, one would say they never left. This has always been yeah. <laughs> or, well, or, country. They've always been here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think in terms of some of the Asian population, some of the Russian and Ukraine, they're fairly recent in Yolo County. And again, it depends what part of Yolo County you're you're looking at. Yes. And by no means am I an expert on that, but I, no. I think that the demographics, if you just look at each city, they kind of represent a little bit more diff, yes. diff, diff, a variety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there, there is obviously, we've established there was a need, there is a need for this uh, yeah. multicultural MCCC. Um, but I have a question and I'll ask all of you and perhaps we'll start with Jeff, Jess, Jeff, <laughs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, now, is it possible to distinguish uh, the multicultural challenge, if you will, in terms of uh, cultural, racial, um, um, background, uh, or, or is it all together? Can you, is it a very sub subtle difference, but how do you handle these subtle differences? Uh, well, I think part of the benefit of this council has been that you know, we've brought together a group of uh, diverse people who are bringing different perspectives. And I think it's really important to point out that this is a, this is a group of uh, very strong, uh, <laughs> strong-willed, strong opinions. Yes. And that's good, because yes. we, uh, I certainly wasn't interested in having uh, yes men or yes women sitting around a table talking with me. Yeah. We meet on a regular basis, and this diverse group of individuals come with their perspectives and their experience. And there are nuances in every culture which can become very relevant for the district attorney and for law enforcement yes uh, in the enforcement and you know how those uh, individuals from that culture deal with law enforcement uh, how they want to participate in the court process so what I would say is just in the the I'll, I'll say it's a short amount of time that the MCCC has been in existence it's helped it's helped because there have been issues where through the discussion, through the dialogue, 
Yes. Uh, we have learned from the, in the DA's office about issues that have helped drive decisions. Yes. Well, you um, mentioned a couple of times uh, strong opinions, <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I think Carlos has given me a bit of an example of one strong opinion. So that means that people who don't necessarily agree with you. Do you, do you have an example of, of a strong opinion which you hadn't thought about it, you know, one aspect that uh, had, had, has come to your attention but you didn't know about? Well, there are many. Uh, what, what I would just say generally is that there, what we've agreed to is that there is no subject that is off limits when yes. we convene in the MCC. Yes. Um, there have been times where the criticism is very heavy and it's very, yes. it's very direct and it stings. But the, the yes. rules of the game in the MCC are that um, that's okay. We're gonna yes. we're gonna share yes. our opinions. And so you know, with Carlos and I, uh, we've had discussions for many years, even before his involvement in the MCCC about drug offenses and how we treat drug offenders. And what I would say is that those discussions have helped me appreciate a different perspective and it has helped develop some policy over the years yes. that I think is more in line with what this community wants. Yes, and that brings, uh, you bring up a very good point because policies are, are obviously make all the difference, but how, how many constraints do you have uh, in terms of enforcing the law uh, within, you know, a certain, um, you know, you can't really, are not totally free to enforce policies, are you? Or Well, there's a certain amount of, of uh, discretion within the district attorney's office on how we charge certain cases what type of exposure, prison time or jail time we ask for. Yes. And so th there's a tremendous amount of yes. power that's involved in exercising that. And this group, you know, from my perspective, has been very valuable in helping to make, uh, we're making better informed decisions, yes. especially dealing with other cultures. Well, that's very reassuring. But uh, I've digressed a little bit. So, um, so Specifically, can you give me an example of, of this subtle cultural skin, race, uh, background, culture, education? Do you treat them, can you treat them in the same way? Well, I think I would, say, and let me back up a little bit. We've, we're in the Multicultural Council, but I have to let you know in terms of uh, our mission and our purpose is to look at inclusionary practices, acceptance, which also includes the LGBT population, which we've talked yes. about and maybe looking forward to maybe have a forum on that. Um, in terms of answering your question, I, um, I would say one thing that uh, a large percentage, if not, very, uh, I'm going to say at least 65% of the people of color of that, 52% uh, of the people of color in, Yolo County, a very large percentage of the people have something very, very much in common, mm -hmm. and that is that they're low income mm -hmm. and they lack education. Yes. And any time you have a group that has a close to poverty status and not higher educational attainment or any or even high school diploma, you have a, a group that's disfr dis disfranchised, which brings across a lot of social issues, uh, which sometimes go into the cultural part of it, but. Uh, that is one thing that we that is very common in, in terms of Yolo County with uh, people of color. Um, you asked for specifics. Um, I, I think, um, well, when nothing comes to mind specifically right now, but I could tell you from the Latino population, um, which is a growing population, the fastest growing population, it's 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 sometimes misunderstood. Uh, not all Latinos are Mexicans. Mm -hmm. There's Cubans. Mm -hmm. And Nicaraguans, San, San, San Salvadorans, mm -hmm. and they're all different to some degree, and we're all the same to some degree. Yes. So, <laughs> and, and and I'm so grateful that you bring this up because this was going to be my next question. You know, uh, which ethnic group is the least understood, uh, and uh, maybe is fair to say all of them. <laughs> what 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 is, what what is your take, Jesse? Well, you, you know. That's a great question because I'll go back and 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 say that 
what's misunderstood is, is that our people of color are low-income people. I, I really believe that, that if I have higher status as a person of color, I tend to be not as misunderstood as someone who's low-income. And this though, is, though it is, does is this, people yeah, misunderstand. Yeah. People. And, and why, why do you think this is so, Carlos, well, that people of color are low-income people? It, that's, I, a, that's a complex issue. Yeah, but, you know, The it great is. majority of Latinos uh, that live in Yolo County are working in the fields, are working uh, jobs in the, yes. in the factories, yes. you know, they, they have less education. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, with the just criminal justice system, the, the, the less amount of resource you have, the, the worse it is for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the low-income uh, Latinos that get arrested end up with uh, the public defender. I call them the public pretenders, but they do a great job, but they're overwhelmed. Yes. And uh, the, 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 the dispense of justice is not equal. Mm -hmm. uh, I have tons of examples. Uh, for example, one of uh, uh, my neighbors that I've gotten to know, he's uh, a young Latino uh, man that at uh, the age of 20 in 2010 was arrested for the first time ever with a small amount of cocaine. Well, he ended up spending three years in prison because of that, that transportation double mm -hmm. felony. Um, and now he's out, he's been out for a year, and uh, he hasn't been able to find a job. Mm -hmm. Thank God for his wife, and he lives in the public housing uh, area. Uh, and uh, if it wasn't for that, he'd be in real serious trouble. Mm -hmm. And he's really trying hard, and he is having a hard time finding a job. Now, an example recently in this community, uh, a young man uh, ended up beating up uh, uh, a gay Latino man almost to death. Mm. And before that, he had stabbed somebody in the next in Dixon in the next county, and that individual got two years of jail time, mm -hmm. which to me was an outrage. Mm -hmm. And the district attorney said that the family was okay with that, but if it would have been my son, I would have been totally out of control yes. because of the unfairness. Well, these these are very interesting examples, and uh, I'm interested in in finding out how they relate to the Multicultural Community Council, yeah. and namely, is there beyond communication and understanding and, uh, uh, you know, getting the law and the community together, do you think this council will have uh, an impact in terms of how people are uh, judged and convicted? Well, uh, it's an attempt. It's an attempt. It's an attempt. Uh, I think that. Yeah. The, what what I, about you, Jeff? What do you think? I'd I'm like sorry. to hear the rest of Carlos's well, yeah. answer. So. Uh, <laughs> what I got to give uh, a lot of credit to, to, to Jeff is that he is attempting to bridge. He is attempting to, to learn. He, he listens, which a lot of politicians <laughs> say they do, but they don't. He does re really listen to other people. So, and sometimes, like he said, it's hard because we have such different, uh, you know. Uh, backgrounds and, and experiences. Experiences, yes. And uh, sometimes it's really hard, but uh, he is attempting to to bridge that. And he knows that uh, when you don't have uh, proper uh, representation, it's easier to get a conviction than somebody that has a, a top-notch lawyer. And that's the way the system works. And it's not very fair to the people that don't have the resources. Yes. And like Jesse was saying, a lot of Latinos do, and African Americans do not have the resources. So yes. the criminal justice system is kind of unfair that way. Yes. If you have money, you can basically get yourself uh, uh, some A justice. good lawyer. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, so, um, Jeff, what is your take on, on this? The, the council will really uh, help? in creating a fair justice system? Well, I think Carlos is right. I mean, this is our attempt to, yeah. to do it better. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if this is the, the perfect solution. We're constantly, you know, I think improving and developing this It's idea. a first step. It is, and I'm not yes. aware of many counties, uh, district attorneys, that have something like this. Our neighbor does, but statewide I'm not aware of this being a, a model that's replicated. But what, what I can say is that the communication, the dialogue that we're having, the, the avenues into the community so that people yeah. in the community who are aggrieved uh, have an issue. They can call Dr. Ortiz, they can call Carlos, they can call one of the other council members and they can bring that to the MCC and we can talk about it. 
and that in itself is a wonderful thing. It's I a mean, huge it's thing. A, it's a it's huge, huge thing. thing. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I agree. Well, um, are you planning an event? Yeah, we have a couple planned. Let me real, real quickly please, continue back on please. With Jeff and Carlos yes. because it's critical. On every agenda that we have, we meet monthly. We spend, there's an agenda item called What's on Your Mind? And we spend at least 15 minutes in, in uh, talking about it, sometimes longer, though, depends on the issue. And, and what's really uh, neat about it, we have one common purpose when we're there. We want to understand each other's issues. And more important, the district attorney wants to understand what we got to say. And sometimes it's give and take, and sometimes we learn stuff that Absolutely. we weren't aware of. And Absolutely. it happens more than we thought it would happen. Yes. So I just want to put that out there that from the internal perspective of the Multicultural Council, it does bring to go together uh, a very active community participation from, yes. from the group. You're a microcosm of, yes, of, uh, of yes, the Yolo County, yes. and then you can uh, yeah. solve yeah. some of these. Well, I, I, can, I can really say that uh, I had no idea this was going on. And to me, this is a fantastic uh, initiative, and uh, it needs to be uh, continued, you know, and, and uh, everybody should be aware uh, of, of what is going on and be able, because, you know, uh, justice, uh, the justice, the judicial system is such a esoteric, you know, it's such a, a mysterious thing for a lot of people. And, and so this too helps uh, with, uh, you know, trying to demystify that. Uh, well, we're just about out of time. Uh, it's, uh, it's unbelievable how fast time goes. So if you could have uh, one comment, maybe uh, adjectives, uh, you know, maybe uh, 10 seconds each uh, to describe this uh, multicultural community council. Uh, you can start, or you can start, whoever. Just I, words. I, I would just say that uh, coming together as a diverse group is the start of inclusionary and accepting each other. And you, Carlos, can you think of something? Yes, I'm, I'm hoping that it would grow, and it would, uh, it would continue to have the dialogue between the, the community and, and the district attorney. And uh, they would continue to learn from each other. I think what Jess said, it was very... Uh, very profound is that we are also learning yes. things that we were not aware of. Yeah. And you, Jeff? This is all about collaboration. Wonderful. Well, our time is up. Thank you so much for coming uh, to, to the studio. And Jesse Ortiz, Carlos Matos, and Jeff Freisig. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, thank you all for watching. You've been watching in the studio. For, from all of us here at uh, Davis Media Access, thank you so much and see you next time.